Loading data into Salesforce is a challenge for most businesses. Tasks such as formatting data, recreating mapping files, and gathering documents are tedious, time-consuming, and error-prone. Automating data loads can significantly reduce errors in mappings and free up time for more important work. My name is Justin, and I'm going to show you how you can automate data loads using Dropbox and Salesforce. So, what is the reality? Why would you want to automate your data loads in the first place? Well, importing data is hard, whether that's you're going and doing a lot of customizing of the data to format it, you're going and inside of a program like the Salesforce data loader and constantly going and clicking around to almost run the exact same data, et cetera, et cetera. It's just very time consuming. So what would be the dream workflow that someone could go and just import data? Well, it would probably look something like you add a file to in the cloud. In this case, we'll use Dropbox. We wait, I don't know, a minute, two minutes, and suddenly the data is imported. So let's just build it. What do you need to do this? Well, you need a Dropbox account. You need the Zapier starter and you need Salesforce Professional Edition. Keep in mind, these are the minimum software requirements. So if you're going and working with enterprise or uh, a higher tier of Zapier, that's fine. So what is the assumption that we're doing with the data formatting? Well, I'm gonna assume that we have the exact same column headers every single time. Additionally, any dates are the correct format, i.e. Um, year, month, day, or the ISO 8601 if you're doing a date time. Additionally, any pick list values, uh, et cetera, are going to be the correct data type for your org. Um, the other important thing is that we're using a CSV. Why CSV? They're easy to parse. They're industry standard. They're easy to open. Can I use Excel sheets? No. Why? because they suck. So let's go and jump into how to configure Dropbox. So now that we're inside of Dropbox, it's pretty easy to go and create a folder to store your data loads. I'm gonna go ahead and create a folder inside my um, user here. I'm just gonna call it Salesforce. And we'll use this to go and store our data loads. Only thing important is that you go and remember the name of this. With that, let's jump into Zapier and get that configured. Inside of Zapier, we're going to go ahead and create a new Zap. We're going to add a trigger of Dropbox. The event will be a new file in a folder. Keep in mind that this file is going to be in the root of the folder directory. So if you have nested folders within the folder that you select, uh, then example, I have Salesforce, maybe I have another folder in Salesforce, you know, data loads as another folder. Um, if I add a new file into the Salesforce folder, then this Zapier will trigger. If I add a file into the data loads folder inside the Salesforce folder, this will not run because the Zapier does not recursively check for files within files, files within folders. The next thing we'll want to do is we'll want to add the account. And finally, we'll want to go and add a folder. Again, I'm choosing this Salesforce. Keep in mind that we have the include file contents as yes. And from here, we can go ahead and test the trigger to go and confirm that a file is inside our folder. In this case, I have a test CSV with some test data. Additionally, if you have more than one file, you can go and read through more of them. 
The next action that we want to cover is the code action. I'm gonna run quickly through how the code action works and then we'll get to configuring. Before we jump into how the code is going to be set up to parse, I wanna quickly dissect how the code action works within Zapier. There's three main components. There's input data, the code itself, and the output data. The input data is how we go and put Co put data from previous steps into the code. Um, and this is done through a menu um, that we can go and select things. We can go and have, we can access this through Python as a dictionary. So if we go and map a file name, then we can access this with the key file name. The next thing is the code. Obviously this is going to be about Python. So what's important is that it's on Python 3.7 and only standard libraries are uh, allowed. So this is why we're not only able to go and parse Excel sheets because we can't open them without basically rewriting it from scratch and why bother? The last thing is the output data. Now, the output data can be structured in any way that you need see fit, but there's two things that I wanna highlight here is that we can have lists and dictionaries. So um, these can also be list of dictionaries, which is what we'll end up doing. Uh, and a list, think of a list like a sequence of numbers, one, two, three, four. And if we were going to go and send an email out to um, all of these numbers, say they were actually email addresses, email one, two, three, four, then we could go and the next code action would execute them one at a time, right? And this is critical when we're going and looking at the way Salesforce imports data because the batch size or how many records that the um, that are imported within a single transaction inside of Salesforce is important and relevant to how maybe some other automation that you have inside the backend of Salesforce is either ran or built. Uh, and then in terms of dictionaries, dictionaries are um, keys or, or fields, like think like a column name, like name. Now we have a value. Um, and so we'll be combining those to go and use the code action. Now that you have a better understanding of how the code action works, let's go and add the code by Zapier. The event that we'll want to use is the run Python. The input data is how we can go and map our data from Zapier to previous steps into our code. So I'm going to go ahead and get the file text and I'm going to call this body. Keep in mind that this is case sensitive. So I'm going to have this capitalized. The next thing we we'll want to do is we we'll want to input the code. Uh, for the code itself, I recommend just looking at the article down below so that then you can go and copy paste it. And that way you don't have to worry about indentation, etc. cetera. Uh, but you can see here, we have this code. And what this does in a nutshell is we get the headers. We add the headers at, from the CSV as we map them to keys in dictionaries. And then we go and through the data, turn the data from basically a comma separated list into um, a list of dictionaries that we can go and use in the next steps. And we can go ahead and test our action to see what this looks like. The final thing that we'll want to do is we'll want to add the Salesforce action. I'm going to go ahead and create a record. I'm going to add to my account. And now that we are connected to our Salesforce instance, we can go and continue.
we'll want to go ahead and map this to our object. In this case, we're going to go and use the lead. And then we'll go ahead and map the columns of the file to our fields in Salesforce. So you can see here, we can map the last name to the code last name. We can map the first name to the first name. We can add company to um, here. We have website email, all this good stuff. So from here, we could go and obviously test this and uh, confirm that everything works. Um, so with that, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are in need of consulting, go ahead and check the links below to get a assistance with your Salesforce needs. Thanks and have a good day.